If you've been through the hierarchy of controls and need to select respiratory protective equipment, or RPE for short, to minimise the risk of breathing in airborne respiratory hazards in your workplace, if yes, there are some key pieces of information that you will need to gather before starting the selection process. In the next few minutes, I'll step you through a short checklist. When you've assembled this information, you'll be able to move on to RPE selection. First, let's look at how airborne respiratory hazards are categorised. Gases, for example, ammonia, chlorine or hydrogen sulphide, or vapours, such as those released from thinners, solvent-based paints, glues and resins. Particulates encompass those mechanically generated, such as from sanding, drilling or grinding, and those that are thermally generated, for example from welding, mist from spraying, fibres such as asbestos fibres, and biological aerosols such as mould, bacteria, viruses, are also considered particulate type hazards. For oxygen deficient environments, we recommend you seek further guidance. Let's categorise the respiratory hazards present in some common tasks. Lead paint removal. If you're using a heat gun, then this will create thermally generated particles. Mould remediation, for example after a flood. Mould has the potential to become a bioaerosol, which is categorised as a particulate. When painting using a roller or brush, this may create a vapour hazard. However, if you are spray painting that same material, then this may become a combination of vapour and particulate hazards. So let's get into step one of the checklist. You can find information on the product you are working with by checking the manufacturer's safety data sheet, which will have the list of ingredients that make up the product. It will give guidance on the type of respiratory protection required. Next, you will need to consider the tasks involved in your job and the tools that you are using. In our previous example of painting, are you brushing, rolling or spraying? Or if you're working with metals, will you also be welding? This information will determine the category of the respiratory hazard. Again, is it a gas, vapour, particulate or combination of these? Will your job be completed outdoors or inside in a well-ventilated area with extraction in place? Or do you need to complete the job in a small area with limited or no ventilation? These factors will have an impact on your personal exposure level. Finally, how much respiratory hazard is in the air where you are working and how long the job or task will take will determine your personal exposure level. The exposure level is required so that you can compare this against occupational exposure limits which are published by WorkSafe in New Zealand and Safe Work Australia as the regulators. This will help determine what type or types of respiratory protection may be appropriate. Knowledge of your personal exposure level also helps define filter change scheduling if your hazard is a gas or vapour. Do check out our filter change video. Do you need assistance to measure your personal exposure levels? Contact an occupational hygienist. So let's do a quick recap. What are you working with and what task are you performing to generate the respiratory hazards? Where are you carrying out the task and what is your exposure level? With these key pieces of information, there are many resources available to help you select the type of respiratory protective equipment, or RPE, that is required.